Hey everybody, I'm Raven Maureen and today I'm doing it again. <laughs> I am actually going to be working on my houndstooth sweater for real this time. So the reason why I'm re-recording this is for a number of reasons. One, I think that my sewing fail video actually made people think that the pattern was bad. And that's not true at all. I've actually successfully made this pattern before, but I had a very challenging personal week around the time that I made that video and around the time that I was trying to do this the first time that my focus just wasn't there. So I have everything I need this time to really succeed. And so you guys know that I've been talking on and on and on about this sweater for a long time now, and I'm really gonna do it. So I have my fabric, check. <laughs> And I have all of my trim and I'm going to link this down below. I'm actually going to link both places that I bought the trim just in case the other one is no longer sold out. But I will tell you that I pre-washed the fabric and the trim and the fabric like snagged like it was like a ball this big of like snagged thread from the trim. And so I actually threaded up my serger so that way when I do do the trim part, I am going to serge it as well as use my sewing machine. So outside from learning the lesson of the trim from before, I'm actually, I actually threaded up my regular sewing machine. I'm gonna be using a, either a zigzag or a straight stitch. I haven't figured out yet which one I wanna do. And then I'm going to do my serger um, on top of that. And that is basically because I had searched the whole thing last time and that is pretty much why I had to buy more fabric. I wasn't able to undo what I did without creating a total mess and just being like a colossal waste of time. So I'm gonna redo this. I have everything I need. Let's get into it. So I mentioned this in my last video, but as you can tell, there is a more dominant side with the houndstooth and then there's like a less dominant side, but it's actually marketed as reversible on Joanne's website. So really it's to each their own which side you would like to cut from. But for me personally, I chose the more dominant black side because I felt like the houndstooth was a little more pronounced. And as you can see, I am using my electric scissors because if I wasn't using my electric scissors, I promise you, I'd probably still be cutting this out because this fabric is just that thick. And so this went really quickly for me. And um, I will definitely link this down below for everyone else. And as you can see, I'm also using my pattern weights, which I will also link below as well. With the fabric that I chose to use, it was definitely important for me to make sure I was putting the right sides together that I wanted to have. And so the pattern instructions do call for you to start at the shoulders. I decided to do a straight stitch on this. Um, I did not see where doing a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch was going to impact how this would turn out in the end. And then I also added elastic to the top of the shoulders. Now this is basically so that the shoulders won't stretch out over time and the rule of thumb is that you just kind of sew over the elastic but you're not stretching it or anything as you do that and you want to make sure you do this for both shoulder pieces. After that I moved on to the arms and so I made sure that I was using the right notches or the I made sure that I had the right pattern pieces for each side and following along with those notches of course. Again, I used a straight stitch and the entire sweater main pieces are a 3 8 seam allowance, which is definitely doable for this. And I'm thinking almost you can increase it if you wanted to, but I cut a size 18. I wanted it to be oversized. I wanted it to be a little bit longer, 
Um, and because I am shorter, I didn't have to make any sort of adjustments as far as the length of the body or anything like that. So all in all, I feel like the 3 8 seam allowance was definitely appropriate for this. So now I am pinning the sides down so we're going from the bottom of the sleeve all the way through the armpit and down the sides. So my trim is pre-ordered. I ordered it at that size. And so I'm measuring the pattern piece. The pattern piece is about um, five inches. And then this actual piece is about six inches. So I figured that I was going to have to increase my seam allowance in order to maintain the proportions for the bottom waistband. And fun fact, when I made this the first time a few weeks ago, I did not start on the waistband. So that was issue number one for me. This time I am obviously following the directions and doing it the right way. And for like just a split second, I did actually think about trimming down the trim. But I had a flashback to just how ugly the thread was when I took it out of the wash that I was just like, you know what? I think I'm just better off increasing the seam allowance and then doing a surged finish as well just to make sure that I avoid any sort of additional snagging or thread run or anything like that. So I started in the middle of my sweater at the center back notch and pretty much I just wanted to make sure that the trim and the fabric were just evenly distributed across the sweater and I actually do this quite a bit throughout this entire project and it's honestly something that I do a lot when I make my collars and whatnot. Anytime that I need something to be evenly distributed I always do it this way because it just seems to be easier and there are less mess ups at the end. So this is attached now and as you can see I also did the surged finishes as well and so now it is time for me to add my neckband. 
So the same thing with the neckband, it's smaller than the um, actual um, ribbed knit that I got and I'm not gonna cut it. Um, but once again, I will increase the seam allowance when I do make it or sew it on. So this is 4.75 and I did a 5.8 seam allowance um, on the last one and I think I'm gonna keep that consistent. So the neckband might be a little bit bigger, I think, than like a true Marlowe, but I just don't want to cut this because of the way it snagged when um, when I had it in the wash. So I have surged the two pieces together, which is consistent with the pattern piece. And now I'm going to add it on the neck band. That way I can tuck it under and do like a almost like a mitered or metered corner at the end. So you have to leave a little bit of seam allowance there in order to do that and close up the corner. This was probably the most challenging um, seam that I had to do. I had to really avoid not stretching it too much and then also making sure that I had just enough to make that corner work at the very bottom of the sweater. So I really took my time with this part. Let's do a fit check. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I wanted. So I did the first um, stitch and then I have to put my interfacing here for the buttons. And then I'm gonna do a stitch here and then bring this corner around so that way it'll be a closed corner. But I did a 7 8 seam allowance here to keep it consistent with the bottom hem. <sighs> and then I have to do the bands, the wristbands. But oh my goodness, y'all. This this is this is literally what I was looking for. This is it. I mean, of course, I don't look cute right now. I look like I'm homeless, but um, this is the sweater I wanted. Oh, my God. It's happening. Ah! Okay. Too cute. She is too cute. So the rib knit trim is honestly where it's at, y'all. Like, if you make the sweater, you need the rib knit trim. You really do. Like, don't play yourself. Like, that's what you need. So now that I know that my plans have worked, ha ha ha. Um, I think I'm gonna call it a night because today was Black Friday. It was a lot today. And um, this is a nice little ending. I'm gonna stop right here, stop while I'm ahead. And tomorrow I'm gonna pick this up and try to finish this. All right, so this is Saturday. We're on day two of making my Helm's Tooth sweater. And so where we left off last night, I did the bottom band, which is actually something I didn't do the first time I made this. So that was like where I messed up before. So I did the bottom band, the body of the sweater is obviously done. And then I did the neck band as well. So the neck band is a little bit trickier 
but I think I got the hardest part done. So now what I'm literally gonna do is I'm going to take the bottom of the neck band. And you see where I put these wonder clips? Well, when I sew this down, it'll be tucked in nice and neat on the bottom like that. So that was another thing I didn't do last time. Like I said, obviously I was not following directions the way I should have and just really, really unfocused on the last version of this. So I'm excited to get this right. And so this is what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, y'all see how that corner is cornering? Yes. So I almost messed up again, you guys. I have to put interfacing on this part or probably, yeah, on this part of the band so that way I can do my buttonholes. And honestly, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, I'm kinda scared to do these buttonholes. Um, I should probably do a test version of the buttonholes first just to make sure that it'll actually work. I've never done a buttonhole on a rib knit. This could go really bad. <laughs> or really good. Okay, so I have a scrap piece of trim and I have put a scrap piece of interfacing in there and I am going to see if this works on my sewing machine. The good thing about my button foot is that it has a stabilizer it has a stabilizer with it. Um, so I'm definitely gonna be using the stabilizer. I need to get the buttons that I wanna use for this too. So I got these buttons on my last fabric haul from New York when I was there for Frocktails. Um, so yeah, we'll see. These are seven eighths. Um, and to be honest with you, I remember these being a little bit bigger. So I wonder if these will look odd on a sweater so big. But I also did buy like eight, so maybe I can like use more. That way they don't look so small. What do you think? I really wanna call this section of my vlog, take a shot every single time you see a warning signal pop up on my sewing machine screen. Because the amount of times that I just had to go through this and so I tried basically to do the normal way and then that didn't go and then I decided that maybe I should do the one with like the rounded edges and that didn't really go um yeah I just was on the struggle bus at this point and I honestly thought this would be the death nail for my sweater In the end, I did eventually realize that I needed to take that stabilizer plate out and away from the actual foot because it was actually hindering me more than I thought it was helping me. And so I, once I removed it, it started to become a little bit easier for me. And then I also had to get this widen the stitch length of my buttonholes. So if you have that option on your machines, Definitely take a look and see if that that is something that you can do because it does make a world of a difference, especially with rib knit. And, you know, the stitching on a buttonhole can just be so small that I encourage anyone, if you're working on this project or you're working on adding buttons to a rib knit, definitely try to widen that stitch length on the buttonhole. Alright. You probably can't see it, but... It looks really good. So let's see if I can make lightning strike twice. So I have pin the facing or not the facing 
pin the neckband just like this unfortunately i think this is too bulky right here to serge but what i plan on doing is stitching this at seven eighths and then doing a top stitch so that it'll lay down I know this is a weird angle, but just go with it. So you see how this edge looks really janky? Cause what I ended up doing was surging this by itself and then surging this in order to avoid like ruining my machine forever. So now I have like this little bottom piece hanging out. So I fixed it on this side, but what I did was just a couple of zigzag stitches so that it'll be more flush. And it doesn't look terrible. I mean, I think I'm gonna do that on this side too. And I've decided against top stitching this because I just, I really like the way it lays right now. And I don't, I just don't wanna ruin it. We're in a really good place with this, with this neck band, which we know gave me so much trouble last time. So um, yeah, and as you can see, I added the cuffs. Gosh, y'all, I just love this sweater so much with the rib knit, like, and it feels like a sweater now. Like it feels store-bought, but it isn't because I made it, you can make it too. Ah, okay, let me finish this. Guys, I finished my sweater. <laughs> Happy holidays. <laughs>